Hello and welcome to the Gritty Kudos on the Monk and of course we are in Empire Sin. We are continuing our Boss Spotlight series and today's episode is all about Al Capone, the legendary Al Capone. Obviously this is a real, um, real time gangster that ruled over Chicago uh, way back in the Prohibition era. We're going to go over his stats today, talk about just how competitive he is compared to the other bosses and if I would recommend him for you to actually start playing as for anyone that's looking for empire sin content this is the right place to be uh, if you're not currently subscribed to the channel think about doing so like the video and of course comment your thoughts down below have you played a playthrough yet as al capone or is someone else taking your fancy let me know down below and if you do have questions about Empire Sin that you can't find a question on the channel, I do actually have an active and growing Discord as well. The link for that will be down in the description. More Empire Sin players are always welcome. So the first one I wanted to talk about is a well-oiled machine. Your brewery production upgrade cost is minus 20%. This is really useful, actually. Um, upgrading your breweries especially the production, is probably one of the first things you're going to be doing. It's probably one of the first things you need to be doing at all when it comes to upgrading. And you're going to be doing it from the very start of the game. So this is going to save you a lot of money uh, over the course of your game. So that's actually a one in the plus. The next one, uh, Silk Sheets, really isn't that good. Unfortunately, it's another upgrade, uh, minus 20%, but it's for a brewery ambience. I don't tend to do that many breweries, and if I do have them, I'm not going to be upgrading them necessarily. Um, it's one that I would just forget is even there. Next up, we have Stronger Bonds. Um, passive faction rate and gain when in a defensive pack is plus 1%. So this is kind of a good one because it means that you're going to be getting into a lot of hopefully business arrangements, hopefully defense packs. Uh, it means that while you're there, you're going to be getting a positive faction rating um, or even more so just because you have this. So that's kind of cool. It means you're going to have extra friends. It means that Capone's probably probably a good option if you're looking to win the game either, you know, by not taking out all the gangsters. If you want to buy someone out, um, then this is probably a good gangster to kind of hit Chicago with. Next up, we move on to the stats. The first stat I want to talk about, of course, is marksmanship. And Al Capone actually gets an 80 on marksmanship, which is pretty cool. We would be looking for a 70 to 80 marksmanship. Anyway, obviously, it's Capone, so you're going to want to be giving him a Tommy gun. And having 80 marksmanship really works very well for that build. Then we move on to defense bonus. Now, Capone actually loses the five defense bonus that most other bosses get. It's only a tiny little difference, but it does matter. So try and remember that Capone is a little bit spongier than the other bosses. His initiative, however, is pretty good at 74. For anyone that doesn't know, initiative means your order in combat. So when you start a battle, the higher this number is, the higher up um, that list you will start. Movement's only at six. Six is the lowest that any boss can actually get, which is a little bit of a shame. But of course, that can be helped out with trinkets later in the game if you manage to find them. The next three stats are leadership, persuasion, and intimidation. Um, they are all to do with your dialogue choices and in-game events and the outcomes that you might have. Now, leadership very surprised to see it so low at 66. Persuasion, again, is extremely low at 50. It means you're probably going to miss out on a few of the better options and better events in the game, unfortunately. Nothing you can really do about that. But Intimidation is, of course, at 90, meaning that if that option ever comes up, you're probably going to get the um, success. Next up, we have the traits, the traits that kind of, you know, every gangster gets given. And unfortunately, Capone has no traits really to talk of about at all. So I'm not even going to bother showing him. He has thick skin, which gives you a 15 percent um, increase to crit resistance. And that, guys, is it. So let's quickly move on to his build. So. 
on tier two, he has the classic savior, light footed or lifeline. I of course would go for lifeline. Lifeline's very good. If any character within four meters uh, of you gets downed, they will bleed out instead of dying, which I quite like. In tier three, we actually have three very, very good options. We have break shot, which is take aim at a target's weapon. A uh, successful hit will break the target's weapon, meaning they have to run off and then fix that up. It's honestly one that I quite like. Um, next up, we have heal. This is obviously a classic. You get injured, you get to heal 60 HP. I would recommend it personally on any boss that has that but then you also have bullet shield which is again another one which is very very good um, you protect yourself and any allies within range you apply a 40 percent reduction um, in damage for the next three rounds it's very very powerful and one that i could recommend taking to be fair when it comes to tier three i would like to have all three of them if i could Moving on to tier four, the only real option I like here is the rapid reload, meaning that when you're reloading, it's not consuming an action point. It's really not that good, but tier four is what it is. And in tier five, the only option, of course, can be kill chain, fire a shot at a target if that target dies. Um, your turn doesn't end and you get one AP back. Very overpowered. Absolutely recommend it. And just touching very briefly on the weapons and what I would run as our Capone. I think it's Capone. So in my opinion, running a submachine gun is kind of mandatory. You have to get a big old Tommy gun. Of course, you've got the golden submachine gun that's in the store when you start. It is a lot of money, but it works very well on Capone. I think if you're going to play the game, you might as well role play as actually playing Capone. Luckily, some machine gun is one of the strongest weapons in the game and has some pretty awesome perks to match. I think you'll have a great time playing that way. And of course, we should really finish the video talking about Reign of Fire. Now, Reign of Fire is Al Capone's uh, boss ability. Of course, it only takes three kills to recharge. All the bosses kind of got buffed there because of that. And Al Capone's is, is an interesting one. It's basically sweep, the ability sweep. Um, his is a little bit better. It lasts a little bit longer, but basic and you don't have to reload your gun straight after which is quite interesting it doesn't actually expend the entire clip i think it literally acts as if you've just used it one time so you're missing like three or four bullets i think you're missing three bullets when you use it um it's pretty good it has a cone of area and any target within that cone will get hit at least once um by your attack it doesn't do like crit damage um, it doesn't do mad damage but it is hard hitting usually characters that you're using this on will move out of your way when they move out of your way they move into the way of other bullets so they kind of get hit twice with this it's pretty good. The more people within a cone, the better it is, obviously. But it isn't the best. You're not guaranteed kills like with a lot of the other bosses. Honestly, I think Al Capone actually got a little bit screwed over in this game. I don't think he's anywhere near as powerful as perhaps we kind of expected him to be. I think he's still a good player. I still think he is a fun player. And all the bosses really are overpowered once you level them up anyway. So he's definitely a good option. Would I put him in my top five? I honestly don't think so. But I still think I could have a lot of fun doing a playthrough as Al Capone. But guys, that is the end of this video. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video real soon. We are, of course, covering every single boss uh, that is left. There's a few left to do. So we're going to get through them pretty soon. But until then, guys, take it easy and happy gaming.